Disclaimer. The following is a non-profit fan-based review. Black Clover is owned by Crunchyroll, Viz Media, Studio Peria, TV Tokyo, Shueisha, and Yuki Tabata. Please support the official release. And despite not using any magic yet, you can guess what kind of magic they could potentially use. For Daizaemon, I believe it could be Earth, because if you reread the chapter, you notice that his entire body is shaking, so you can guess that his magic is based on vibration, either not only just Earth, but also could be about sound. That's my possible guess. For Kumari, it's clearly going to be lightning, because if you notice on top of her hairpiece, it has the shape of a lightning bolt, so you would think like her element is clearly going to be electricity, similar to like Lux magic. And lastly for Jozo, I'm guessing it's wind. Now, the reason I think is because remember, they're supposed to be ninjas, and being stealthy they are, they had to move like the wind. Something like that. <laughs> okay, now, I really don't want me a person, and sorry for saying this, but I freaking CALLED IT! <laughs> Man, I always wanted to say that. Hey guys, Ellug1997, and welcome back to page 346 of Black Clover, and presumably my last video for 2022. And let me tell you, this year has not been what I was expecting, but it was still good nevertheless. There was my nephew's birthday, and I finally got a job, not to mention, there were some great movies and shows that came out a lot this year. Now let me just take this time to consider it and say this. I want to thank everyone that actually subscribed to my channel and actually gave me a chance to watch my content, alright? I know I made a lot of promises in the past that I wish I could have kept, but that was not what I was hoping for since I was really busy in IRL. But hopefully in 2023, I will be able to produce much new content that isn't just about Black Clover and give you guys what you want to watch or something if you're interested in so. You know what I mean? And not to mention though, I will be making new shorts later down the line since I feel as though I got into use of these shorts. <laughs> and plus not to mention, I might think of what kind of shorts I can make uh, for the upcoming year, you know? So again, thank you so much for all your support. You guys have been there. Like even though that I never have been able to get a chance to produce as much as I can, you guys still stuck with me to the very end, all right? So again, thank you so much for uh, for subscribing to my channel, all right? You really are great in your own unique way, all right? But back to the chapter, if this is really is indeed the last chapter of 2022, I gotta say, this was a great way to end it, and not to mention getting very close to the near end of this arc, all right? So, what actually occurred in this chapter? Let's find out. The chapter begins where we see the residents of the Land of the Sun being evacuated in one of the main islands. They were told by Loruya that a monster from the legend, the Fire and Dragon, will be attacking the Land of the Sun. And of course, they heeded his warning and evacuated to the main island. And as you can see by the reaction, they were all shocked and just terrified by the beast itself. And the old man saying that the Shogun and the Ryos and Seven, they can handle it somehow. And speaking of which, we cut back over to the palace where we see the Ryos and Seven facing off against not only the Fire of the Dragon, but also the Three Paladins. As we see Kiso laughing maniacally as Sister Lily unleashes her spatial boxes, but she dodges it. And Ijika commenting on Kizo, you're going too far without a plan. And Sister Lily commenting, goodness, what incredible magic. Are you sure you should be fighting me though? And as we see the fire dragon going over the Rios and Seven, even blasting through a mountain. And Sister Lily's all like, you better do something or else the fire dragon will destroy everything. And thus we see the dragons facing off against the Rios and Seven. But Ija tells him that no, it won't. We have an all seeing lord on our side. And thus, we cover to a flashback to how this all transpired. In the 
flashback, we have Ryuya explain to them about the situation that's about to happen in the Land of the Sun. It's going to become a battlefield as they'll be facing off against losers' paladins and that they are the only ones that can take them on. One of them possess water and space magic, and he describes her as the most trouble, Sister Lily. The other possess ice magic, Grease, and the last one that he for sure can that control magical critters, or aka beast magic, which is Yolch. I hope that was his name. They also plan on releasing the fire dragon, and they should be arriving here by morning. But the Reels and Senate are confident that they can sell them out right then and there. But Rilia tells them that they have to save the people first. If they fight without laying out any groundwork, no matter how they do it, there's going to be casualties or victims. And these people can even be raised from the dead. Or some of them can even be turned to the paladins themselves. So what Rilia suggests is that they need to think about the lives of their people first by clearing them out a go show and, ta and then tackle the enemy there. And Kamari's all like, but the legendary monster to pretty much destroy the land of the sun, right? And Kizo, can we even have an opponent like that? And Ryuya just laughs it off and saying, sure, it's the biggest and baddest enemy we ever face. But I believe in you. If anyone can take it down, it's you guys. This just shows you just how much confidence he has on his strongest warriors. And it's no joke. We're going to see how strong they really are. We cut over to the present where the Reels and Center are about to show the Paladins just how strong they really are and why they're considered to be the strongest in the Land of the Sun. Now, two or three months ago, I mentioned that the Ryosen 7's magic could be based on the elements as we saw Ichiga displaying her dark magic. But in this chapter, we finally get to see what their magic is capable of, and I was actually right on the first three's magic, and the other, not so much. And not to mention, we're finally seeing the full display of their Zen 10, as we saw Hinkizo charging directly inside one of the dragon's mouths, as we see her unleashing her Snow Nujutsu, Silver Fox, and Blood Dye Robes, Zen 10! And then afterwards, we cut over to Daizaman unleashing his Earth Yojutsu, Giant King of Wisdom, which resembles a giant statue of Buddhist, Zenten. And then Jutsu unleashing his Wind Yojutsu, Killing Kaga Blade, Zenten. Kamari unleashing her Lightning Yojutsu, Diamond Yashi Princess, Fivefold Dance, Zenten. And lastly, for Ichiga unleashing her Dark Yojutsu, Black Crescent Moon, Zenten. And thus... The dragon is now defeated. The chapter ends with Sister Lily looking both surprised and amazed that these are the country's strongest mages, and Ichiga confirming to her that Lord Ruya believes in us, so the Ryuzen 7 will never yield. Wow! <laughs> If that's not how you end the chapter, I don't know what is, alright? Because that was epic, man. It was so... Words cannot describe what I just witnessed because for Daizaimon Jozo and Kalmari's magic, I was so right that their elements were based on Earth, Wind, and Lightning respectively. Now, the only Ryozen member I kind of got wrong is mainly uh, Kizo's, which her magic's mainly Snow. Originally, I thought her magic was basically going to be either Water or Ice, but it turns out it was actually just Snow magic. Which, honestly, now that I think about it, it would make sense because given that she has like that appearance of a silver fox, which honestly, from her design alone, she kind of reminds me a bit of Kurama's demon form in Yu Yu Hakusho. And not to mention, her snow magic also kind of reminds me of this other character that also has snow magic in the series, which I forgot his name was something about like uh, him helping his brother kidnap children and then, um, I don't know, redeem himself and then... Uh, and then helps the kids at the orphanage. I don't remember his name. Well, honestly, I'm a little lazy to research this now because I really wanted to finish this uh, as soon as possible, right? But bottom line, though, this chapter does prove uh, how strong the reels in Seven are, not only in terms of magic, but how well they use Zenten. Now, in all honesty, I'm probably not the only one that guessed what their magic was going to be, but props to everyone that actually guessed it right or at least try, alright? So, nice job. Another thing I forgot to know in the magic section was mainly about Ichiga's Black Crescent Moon, which honestly is like the equivalent of like Yami's Dimensional Slash. Considering that they're siblings, their moves will be sort of identical, or at least the namesake, you know? Another thing I like to point out is regarding Ryuya in this chapter in the flashback. Now, I've been hearing a lot of theories that Ryuya might have more dark intentions as we originally thought, but 
I'm not one of those people that actually think that he's evil. And all honestly, I kind of hope that it really doesn't happen, because if that were the case, then it would have been too obvious. I mean, we've seen come and go that, um, that plot twist villains and all that, but for Ryuya being introduced this late in the game, especially when we're in the final saga or arc of Black Clover, I just don't really see it happening. You know, because I honestly think that Ryu is intending on trying to help uh, the people trying to save as much lives as he can, as he can foresaw the future. But again, though, if it does come true and all that, then this is going to be a big whiplash when, um, when when we find out, you know? But bottom line, I still don't believe that Ryuya is evil or something like that, as he is trying to help his people, even motivate the reels in 7, as he is that confident that they can win, foresight or not. And speaking of the reels in 7, the way how they display their magic in Zen 10 is that powerful or so. The reels in 7 are basically the equivalent of the magic knight captains from the Clover Kingdom. Now, the only ones that we didn't see the what their magic is, is mainly Yosuga and Fujio, but probably we're gonna see what their magic is by the time they're finished with Asta, you know? So like I said in the beginning, if this is indeed the last chapter in 2022, this was the best way to end the chapter, alright? But anyways though, what do you guys think of the chapter? Is there anything I may have missed or mistaken when covering any chapter? Please say so in the comment section below, alright? Thank you so much for watching, and hopefully by next year, I'll be able to produce new content for you guys that isn't just about Black Colbert, but something new that you guys will enjoy all right so anyways thank you so much for watching please be sure you hit the like button subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon to be notified for the next update all right thank you good night and happy new year to everyone around you all right laters